Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today's episode, it's the day we've all been waiting for the 2020 design and technology component to release of the contextual challenges. It's here. Happens every year on the 1st of June. We've got the 2021 live here. You can see from my screen over to the side, it's live, it's today. Really excited time for you and me to get this ball rolling. Okay, let's get started. Right, so first things first, I'm gonna go through what's on the contextual challenges so you guys at home can see how and what to do. I'm gonna teach you how I would tackle the first stages of this process and I'm gonna leave that at the end of the video. Uh, if I go too quick, don't forget, you can always pause me and I'll just stay stuck on the screen and you can read through it at your own pace. Okay, let's have a look then. First things first, the instructions. Now I'm gonna read through the instructions and break them down for you. So there are certain keywords in there, key phrases that you might not be very familiar with and, and I'll break those down for you. If not, you could just pause me, read through it and skip over to the next part. Okay, so we must undertake a project in response to one of the contextual challenges so we only need to look at one of those taking into account the needs and wants of the user so massively important there the needs and wants of who's going to use the product now there's two things we could do there now we could almost mind map that couldn't you needs of the user and wants of the user but i'll leave that for later on in the, in the video you should use creatively and imagination when applying an iterative design process to develop and modify designs and to design and make a prototype. Okay, so there's a few things there I need to just clarify. Iterative design process. What does that mean? Well, essentially, an iterative design process is almost like a storybook. It's read from page one all the way to page end, where you can see a flow to your designs. It's going to be no good if you design a product and you start here and we end up with something that looks very, uh, let's say for argument's sake, very circular and round. And then all of a sudden, bang, the end product is this huge rectangular square thing. Well, how did you get there? What, what choices did you make? How did you make the design decisions to, to go from that to point to the next point? So if it's iterative design, it, it has a flow. We can see, okay, well, we've curved the edge there on that design. The feedback said we want something a bit more rounded uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, lastly, prototype. What does that mean? Well, that is something we would use for creating something ready for batch production. So often you make a prototype of something. It's a working model of your product and you would send that to your client and go, this is it. What do you think? You can always get feedback on the prototype sometimes and then you would take it to production right uh, you have been provided with three themes each one has two contextual challenges and they're listed below we're going to look at those in a moment through your ideas and your final prototype you will be required to show how you have addressed the contextual challenge so you want to we want to know how have you answered that question so the contextual challenge essentially is a question and how have you answered that? We will see that through a body of portfolio evidence. Speaking of portfolio, you must produce a portfolio and a prototype. So we've got a folder work, which shows us designs and reviews, the processes, and then we have the model, which is our prototype, the actual, the, the nitty gritty, this is it. This is what how we're going to use this to help people in the real world. Lastly, the portfolio must contain photographic evidence of the manufacture of the prototype. Now, that means that as we're going along with our product, we're taking photographs of you marking out, measuring, assembling, cutting, that kind of thing. Now, if you're joining me from our academy, of course, you know we've got the iPads, so that's not going to be a problem for us. Uh, but if you're in a different setting, then you'll need to take photographic evidence at each point throughout your process now that doesn't mean we're taking photographs of you drawing some design ideas you need to be taking photographs of the manufacture the making now for my guys at the academy that i work at we tell them to do it in three parts so if you're marking out let's say a finger joint we want to see the photograph of you marking it out so we can see you've got that skill we want to see you sawing that finger joint the making the process part and we want to see you assembling that finger joint so putting it together that way, we're going to have a build-up, a, a portfolio, uh, almost like a diary of making, so we can see 
each step of the way how you've done it. And don't forget, that's not our responsibility. Now a lot of you think, ah, oh, don't worry, the teacher's going to come around and take photographs. Yeah, we will. That's no problem, we'll do that for you. But you've got to tell us, sir, 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 or miss, 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 I'm marking out this finger joint, can you take a photograph? Yeah, no problem. Bang, done. Okay, and then get it uploaded to your folder, or get it printed off and stuck into your work. Okay. Lastly, I think I've said lastly about three times, but that's all right. Lastly, lastly, your portfolio must be approximately 20 to 30 pages, or the electronic equivalent. Some of you are thinking, oh no, 20 pages, that's loads of work. It's not really, because if you break it down, you've got things like research, you've got designs, you've got the specification to write, uh, you could have three or four pages of design ideas. Then there's the development section, so the real nitty gritty stuff. That could be three or four pages again. Then all of a sudden you've got your review of ideas, and you've, we've got the chosen idea, and, and review the chosen idea. After you review the chosen idea, of course, then we go on to actually manufacturing, then we've got the diary making, we could do flow charts, we could do diagrams, we could test parts, you could read test parts. It's almost an endless task. However, 30 pages, really maximum. We don't want to go too far. I know there's some, some students on the other side of the coin are thinking, oh, I haven't got enough pages. I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I've got to do this. Try and keep it honed down to between 20 and 30 pages. Okay, right. The time is time. It's Let's get on to this. The challenges. Berzinger, here we go. I'll read this very quickly. Right. Here we go. Uh, you can tell I'm excited, so you guys must be absolutely buzzing here. All design technology happens within a context. It is important for designers to understand the context they are designing within, as this will impact on the wants and needs of the users, as well as the requirements for the design. Designers often need to find innovative solutions, uh, so it's really uh, innovative. How would I describe innovative? Uh, new, new ideas, uh, and clever ideas. Uh, and they look for inspiration from many places to come up with their ideas. Often these design challenges relate to ways in which improvements can be made to the lives or environments in which people live. So the products get to actually help real people in real life situations. It's a fantastic, fantastic course. But anyway, uh, below are the three themes, each with two contextual challenges. You must choose one uh, of the contextual challenges to explore and respond to through your assessment project. Okay, so. As we can see here, oh, it's exciting stuff. Three themes. Look at these guys. Now, these, I've got to say, are the best themes I've seen so far in this uh, new design technology specification. And I'm very excited for these. And I, I, I would struggle to pick one, to be fair. Move it up there so you can see them. Now, pause that if you want. Soak it in. But here we go. Climate energy. Theme one. Climate energy. Let's see if I can open up a layer here so I can actually draw on top of that. Let's go there. Berzinger, let's make sure you can see it too. There we go. Contextual challenges. A, how can products be used to increase our awareness of the climate emergency? So that's a massively important role right there. Don't feel the pressure of that, of course. We're not asking you to solve the climate emergency worldwide, although you might want to make steps to go forward with that. And what an opportunity. What a fantastic opportunity here. How can we increase our awareness of climate emergency? How can products be used to promote a more sustainable lifestyle? Okay, so things like recycling, reusing things. How can we promote that? How can products be used to, to help support that process? Oh, wow. Anyway, uh, this one, oh, this one really strikes home for me. I mean, if I was a student, that's where I probably aim my, aim my sights down. Cinemas. How could products be used to encourage people to visit the cinema? Oh, what a project, what a theme. How amazing would that be? We've got loads of things. I'm, I'm digressing, I'm digressing. I'm getting too excited. Control yourself, Mr. David, control yourself. How could products be used to improve the experience of people going to the cinema? Oh, wow. I mean, what could we do for that? I mean, okay. I'll jump onto that in a little bit later on. Uh, I'm, I'm getting carried away. Uh, lastly, theme three, the coast, contextual challenge. How can products be used to preserve wildlife in coastal areas? Wow. I mean, if you've got a passion for animals, that's a great theme to get your teeth sunk into. Not literally. I mean, I'm here all day, so the jokes can keep coming thick and fast. Uh, 
how could products be used to stay safe at the coast? Well, there's lots of opportunities we can go for with that. Um, barriers, uh, safeguarding, um, I'm just banging my mic there. Uh, safeguarding um, protocols we could add in there. We could have devices to keep people safe when they're floating around in the water on the coast. Oh, oh, it's great. Anyway, I've digressed again, uh, getting carried away. Uh, students at the academy will notice this is a common trait of mine to get carried away with things a little bit over the top. Uh, but if you're not from the academy, uh, I don't know if I've said this already, but if I haven't, if you're not from my academy and you want some tips and help, then drop some comments in the descriptions on the video and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. If you are from the academy, then again, if you're struggling, drop the comments in the video and I'll respond to you. I'm online all this week, so if you need me for anything, I'll be here. Um, also, I forgot what it also was. I'll come back to it later. Right, so they're the themes. Video's about 11 minutes now, so I'm going to wrap it up pretty soon. I'm going to spend two minutes just going through how I'd start to tackle this process. Um, and this is just my version, just as my guide, my uh, tutorial. Uh, let's let's go from there. So, what should I do? What should I do? So, I'll open up a new layer. In fact, I'll hide those layers away. So that's gone now, and that's gone. And then I'll just change my brush. So I could write. Da -da -da -da. I think that's. Do I want script? I don't think I want script, do I? I want. There we go. I want calligraphy pen. There we go. Right, so imagine there's my sheet of A4 paper. Uh, let's spin it around. Or an A3 sheet of paper. Again, you know me. Border it up. Centimeter border. Around the outside. Present it nice. Don't forget to use that ruler. There we go. Okay, and then I would put in here the theme. Da, 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 and I'd write that theme in a little bubble and I would start to mind map some of these ideas so what what kind of ideas can we have for this a theme uh, let's go for the cinema one as an example and this is just an example it's just how I would go about it so I will offer a few different ideas of what how I would do to tackle this and let's go or I think it was um, encouraging people to come to the, the cinema. So let's go for encouraging people. So the first thing you might want to do is you might want to just bridge off here and go with ideas first of all. So think about your ideas. And then from your ideas, you want to then think about processes. And then from the process, you might want to then think about materials or components. And then again, you do another one over here, so you'd have another idea and so on and so forth. And you, you break it out and bridge it out like that. Uh, I will give you one example because I'm, I'm very conscious of um, the guidelines that I'm not allowed to sort of tell you exactly what to do so uh, this is just my guide and I'll give you one example here so it might be that for example we go uh, point of sale so point of sale is like the displays you get at the cinemas and it might be we have a display that might help promote people coming to the, the cinema it might be film based it might be cinema based. So it might be generic, it might just be based on the cinema. So we've got Odeon, we've got uh, Cineworld, Cineworld, I can't remember spell City World, Cineworld, I think it's like that. Uh, you've also got View. And then you can do things like color schemes as well. So the Odeon's color scheme is blue. 
uh, view, I think is purple, but anyway, you can look at the color. Uh, if it's film based, you could look at what's new 2021, what's coming out. Film, film, film. Uh, so you could look at film A, film B, and you could go down that road. Uh, the display could be uh, interactive. Don't be afraid to add drawings to this as well. So if you've got a, a display of, of whatever, like that, you could have holes or something that people could go in and the, the film titles down here. And then people going behind it and people enter. And you could have people coming in like this and then they have photographs and you could have like a thing like that. Uh, you might want to do something with props or materials. So goggles, 3D goggles. Uh, we might want to keep it really sort of topical and go, well, okay, what can we do to the 3D goggles? Well, maybe we could add a visor to them with maybe some kind of thing on the top. And then that becomes PPE as well, so it becomes safe uh, in virus pandemic. So we can draw on this, you can add ideas, you could then go, okay, what well, if I'm going to make it out of PPE, what I'm going to use, I'm probably going to use polypropylene. Uh, and then we talk about materials as well. And then they've got the goggles, so you've got a hinge on there. Uh, so it's got to fold away. You've got sizes to consider. So you can see already there, I've come up with like one, maybe two ideas, and I've generated enough there to fill almost half a page. You guys could do the same thing with yours, but really, really get excited about this. Get your teeth sunk into it. If you've got any questions, then please drop them in the comments below, and I'll get back to you. I've overrun on this by a long way. 17 minute video is a big one. But you guys know this kind of thing. You can just scroll through me, can't you? Uh, Okay, so until the next one, stay safe. Bye now.